Saquon Barkley is just, I, I don't know what else to say about him. This is the best offensive group that he will have been with in his entire short-term career. He is dynamic. He is different. He's in a class of his own, along with maybe three other running backs in the NFL. That's the type of guy you pay. Saquon Barkley is going to be a tremendous impact for this football team. Former Giants running back Saquon Barkley has reached an agreement with the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles looked at Saquon Barkley as a player, a back, who could elevate this offense and be a true three-down weapon and catch the ball out of the backfield and make the types of plays that would return the Eagles to the type of success they had at the beginning of last season and the season before. You know, you guys, I'm just going to jump straight into the Philadelphia Eagles at this point because that guy, Howie Roseman, is continuing to make move after move after move to make this Eagles team even more talented than they already were. I mean, I myself thought if they just ran it back with basically the same team Team with new coaches. They were going to see a lot more success, but they're not just doing that. They're also, on top of that, adding even more talent to the team, which makes them pretty scary if I had to say so myself. They've already made some massive improvements, not only on offense, but also on the defensive side of the ball. And what's crazy about all of this is I don't think they're done quite yet. But before we get into why I believe that, if you like Philadelphia Eagles content just like this, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Eagles content for the remainder of this offseason. Okay, so to get back on topic with the Philadelphia Eagles, obviously this team is coming off a season where they didn't live up to the expectations that everyone had for them. They ended up having a complete collapse towards the end of the season, and they ended up losing in the first round of the playoffs due to that. And while for most teams, making the playoffs might be a success, it's not for the Eagles because they started the season 10-1, and the year prior they went to the Super Bowl, so everyone's expecting them to be able to repeat that success. But obviously that just didn't pan out, and it didn't happen. So coming into this offseason, there were some glaring needs that the Eagles needed to fix, and so far they filled a lot of the needs that I think they needed to fill. Firstly, and most importantly, the biggest downfall for this Eagles team last season was their coaching, and I don't think any Eagles fan would disagree with that. So, coming into the offseason, we knew there was going to be some coaching moves made, and the Eagles found a way to do just that by adding Kellen Moore as their new offensive coordinator, and Vic Fangio as their new defensive coordinator. Brian Johnson was an absolute disaster on offense. He brought nothing creative to the scheme, and he made Jalen Hurts life a lot harder than it needed to be. And then as far as the defense goes, I don't think there's much to say other than they were one of the worst defenses in the entire league. So obviously a change needed to be made and I think Vic Fangio is a great option to do that. Fangio is coming from Miami where he coached a really, really good defense even though they had a ton of injuries down the stretch. So I think him coming in with all of the talent that the Eagles currently have and the talent that they've added so far through the offseason is going to make the Eagles defense in 2024 show a lot more promise than they previously did. But like like I said, they didn't just add a new coaching staff. They also added some players, and that's what we're here to talk about. To start off on the offense, man, the first guy you've got to talk about, of course, is Saquon Barkley coming over from the New York Giants on a three-year deal worth $37 million. This means they're going to be paying him a little bit over $12 million a year for the next three years. And while, yes, some people might say it's a little bit steep for a running back, I'm not really bothered by it because Saquon is easily a top five back in the entire league, if not a top three back in the entire league. So being able to add his dynamic play style to this offense really is going to make it a completely different unit. We've seen him have great season after great season behind a terrible New York Giants offensive line. So I can't imagine what he's going to be able to do behind this Eagles O-line even without Jason Kelsey on it. I know Jason Kelsey retiring makes the O-line a little bit worse, but I'm still confident that this O-line is going to be one of the best units in the league. And I also trust that Kellen Moore is going to be able to scheme up a pretty creative run game, which is going to cater around what Saquon Barkley does best. He's obviously one of the shiftier backs in the entire league between the tackles, but he's also a guy that you can get out on the edge and he can make a lot of things happen out there as well, which is something I think we're going to see a lot. Last season, DeAndre Swift was fine, but he honestly just wasn't that great of a running back if we're going to be completely honest. So I think adding Saquon is going to take this run game to a completely new level and it's going to make this passing attack thrive because of it. Speaking of the passing attack, the Eagles are of course still going to have A.J. Brown, who has proved himself to be a top 
top five wideout in the league, and they're still going to have Devonta Smith to pair with him, which gives them still one of the best receiver duos, hands down. And then to add to that receiving core, they added Devontae Parker on a one-year deal for just a little bit over $4 million. Devontae Parker, as we all know, is starting to get older, but from what I've seen from him over the past two years, I think he can be a really solid third option to pair with what the Eagles already have as their number one and number two option. I mean, he played for probably the worst passing attack in the entire league last year on the Patriots, and I don't think he played too, too bad, so I think we're going to see him play pretty solid for the Eagles with all things considered. So you have a full receiving core that I'm pretty confident in, and then on top of that, you also have a tight end in Dallas Goddard, who has proven himself to be one of the best receiving tight ends in the league, which just gives Jalen Hurts tons of options to work with, and I think Kellen Moore is going to do a great job at optimizing all of them. But of course, as we all know, the offense isn't the only thing that matters in the game of football. You also got to worry about the defense, and the Eagles defense, like I mentioned at the start of the video, was one of, if not the worst defense in the entire NFL last year. I mean, they couldn't stop anybody regardless of the offense that they were playing against. So coming into this offseason, they had to make a change at the defensive coordinator position, and they did exactly that. And they also needed to add some pieces to the team if they really wanted to see some difference. And man, oh man, have they so far done exactly that. Firstly, I don't think anyone would argue that the best part of this Eagles defense last year was their pass rush. And I think you can also say that right now, that's still their best unit, especially considering they added some more juice to it. They, of course, will still have Josh Sweat and Hassan Reddick, who are still one of the best edge duos in the league when both on the field. And then on the interior, they're going to have Jalen Carter still, who is going to be going into his second season, coming off a rookie season where he was one of the best defensive tackles in the league. And then, of course, you'll still have Jordan Davis and Milton Williams to go along with Jalen Carter, which makes this defensive line even better if the Eagles were to make no moves. But like I said, they added some juice, and they did that by adding Bryce Huff on a three-year deal worth $51.5 million. Bryce Huff, if you didn't know, played for the New York Jets last year, and he found a way to rack up double-digit sack numbers. When you watched him play, he consistently found a way to get pressure on the quarterback, and what's crazy about all of this is that he's only 26 years old, so he's just now entering his prime, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him have his best season in this upcoming year. But they didn't just make their defensive line better. They also filled in some key pieces that they were missing last season, and that starts at the linebacker position. I don't even want to get into how bad the Eagles linebackers were last season because they were absolutely atrocious. So coming into this offseason, we knew they needed to make moves and they did that by going out and signing Devin White. Devin White, just like Bryce Huff, is only 26 years old. So you're getting a guy that's probably about to go into his best seasons and you got him on a pretty cheap deal. And then to pair with him, of course, you're still going to have that guy, Nakobe Dean, going into his second year as a starter. So hopefully we'll be able to see him stay healthy. And I think if he does, He's going to have a pretty solid season. And then on top of that, they also added a guy in Oren Burks coming over from the 49ers, which is also a pickup that I like a lot. Oren Burks didn't get to play much last year because he's sitting behind some of the best linebackers in the NFL, but that also means that he got to learn from those guys and he got to sit in a 49ers linebacker room that has produced some really, really good linebackers. I know a lot of people aren't currently talking about this signing, but I really do think this could be one of the more underrated signings of the entire offseason when we watch the season play out. And then you also had to add something to the secondary because it also took a step back last year and you did that by bringing back CJ Garner Johnson who was on the team that went to the Super Bowl. You signed him to a three year deal or 33 million which isn't much at all especially considering how well he was able to play on the Lions this past year. A lot of people said CJ Garner Johnson was overrated and he only played good because the Eagles had a great pass rush in 2022 but man oh man was that wrong and we saw that when he played for the Lions this last year and put together a pretty solid season when he wasn't injured. He's one of the best safeties in the league at finding the ball and making plays on it, so I think that's going to help out this Eagles secondary out a ton. So I mean, man, I don't know what to tell you. The offense has gotten better this offseason. I think we're going to see them be a lot more dynamic and explosive in 2024, and when you pair that with a defense that added a ton of talent and a defensive coordinator that has proven that he can coach really, really solid defenses, I think we're getting ready to see a newly improved Eagles team that has a chance to dominate the league once again.